Alrighty, we have Vestina White to Rise TV. How you doing? I'm doing great. Oh, welcome. Thank you for inviting uh, me. You're welcome. So yeah, we're gonna get started. So uh, tell me, how was your childhood growing up? Well, I my parents were educators. So it was a little different from the normal household. The, their expe expectations of me were very high. And um, it seemed like I was on a lot of pressure to, to perform and like be the best, you know what I mean? And because my dad was a principal, my mother was a teacher, but she wasn't, she didn't teach in the school that I actually taught in. I mean, that I actually went to, but my dad was a principal. So he was pretty much responsible for making sure that I got the, was in the classes that I need to like take. And he put me in all honors classes. He put me in all honors classes. So, you know, it really made it kind of challenging for me, but pretty much, you know, um, I was able to handle it. Yeah. Now, was that in El Dorado, Arkansas? No, this was in Benton Harbor area schools. Okay. I uh, was uh, a student there throughout my whole childhood. I started from what, second grade to 12th grade. And we moved from Monticello, Arkansas huh. and um, to Benton Harbor, Michigan, because my my parents got a job there in that area and they found they can make more money okay. in Michigan opposed to Arkansas. All right. so, so how was your relationship with your brother? My relationship with my brother, we were cool. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just typical for us, a brother always to mess with a sister. Mm -hmm. And so he we he would uh, we did a lot of things. I mean, in my childhood, we were like very creative in what we did. We would make forts and and you know you know I don't if you know anything about building a fort or whatever. You brought stuff from the house, put pictures on, you know. You made the fort out of out of wood and you got down in it and you know we did a lot of creative things. You know when we were younger All together. Right. Uh, was you ever into sports? Yes, um, ninth grade I. Uh, was in band okay. and you know it was right before uh, you had to make the decision to do sports or either be the, in the marching band so I chose sports over marching band I um, wanted to be a, um, play basketball and I wanted to run track okay. so those those were my two focals in high school okay then and, and cross country okay so um, I was doing a little research and uh, I know you kind of fall uh, behind your father and your mother footstep uh, and, and working in the school. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, I started, um, we moved from El Dorado to Benton Harbor. I worked at Benton Harbor High School. Um, original, well, actually, I, I worked throughout the whole district from junior high to high school to administration. I was doing secretary work and then I worked in the reading curriculum uh, area, well, actually special ed area, which that I guess prompted me to go to school, uh, go to college and UAPB for special education. Okay. That's how it actually started. And so when I came back, to Ben Harbor from college, then I decided, you know, I wanted to go into the school district. And I worked in the school system for what, five years? And then things died down. I moved over here to South Bend. Mm -hmm. And then it seemed like I made a complete circle and went right back into the school district. So I'm thinking it's more of a divine purpose than anything where I'm back here and, and I'm in education now again and working in the special ed with special ed students yeah. and um i really have a passion for it yeah. it's uh it like it grew like like flipped because i mean at first i had no tolerance for kids 
And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm here and I'm like, you know, really interested in, you know, who they are and what they're going to become and their future. It's like it's before me and I got to make sure that something happens, okay. you know, in their best interests. So back then when you was working with kids um, in Ben Harbor, mm -hmm. um, how was the kids? The kids were a little bit different. They were more respectful. So if I see somebody that I worked with back then now, they would address me Mrs. White. I mean, they addressed me in Mrs. White there. I mean, it was it was a little bit different. This generation is a little bit different altogether as far as how they relate to you. Mm -hmm. You know, they they relate to you as though you are on their level okay. and you have to kind of continually um, continually, um, what's the word I want to use? Remind them that they're a child and you're the adult mm -hmm. and you don't talk to me a certain kind of way, you know, so, but I just feel like back then they were a little more respectful than they are now. Okay. They don't look at you, um, as being in authority, you know, they okay. challenge you Okay. in authority position. So. What's your motivation behind like working with the school? Well, my motivation is um, I love what I do. I love working with the students. I love seeing them uh, motivated and focused and wanting to become this person that I know that they were purpose and created to be. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm trying to pull out of them. Okay. I'm trying to make sure that they become that. You know what I'm saying? And trying to protect them from all of the negative because you got positive and you got negative. So I'm coming with the positive and then you got somebody back here that's trying to um, be negative towards them or mm -hmm. dis dis con consent, um, d condescending. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're putting them down. They're degrading them. They're making them feel like, you know, you know, you can't do this, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, I had that same kind of stuff when I was working at the high school where, you know, we were trying to expose the kids to more mm -hmm. and the ones around them didn't want them to have that experience. And it's the same thing. It's, it's very political in these different schools, especially mm -hmm. the schools that get a lot of funding, you know, for the kids. Yeah. They more or less want it for themselves. You know, I'm talking from the top yeah. down. They want less use the monies for themselves opposed to putting it into the kids to make sure to provide them with a good education. Now, would you say that uh, the kids push back more um, on the female than the males? Um, yes, it you know, it can go back and forth. Uh, you may have a girl that's going against a male. You may have a male going against, and it, it all depends on if they have mother and daddy issues. You know what I'm saying? Some of them have daddy issues. Uh, I would say more so like the male, the the male student. And so they disrespect the female because that's all they saw. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So the the male they treat them like you know, and you know the male you know the way they come, it come, they have a different voice. It's it's you know it has that authority in yeah. it, and so they look at them different than they do a female. But the female does the best that she can. You know what I'm right. saying? Especially these females, and I think there's a lot of females that do a real good job with their children. I mean, I had a grandmother my dad's mother i mean you know she, daddy turned out to be pretty good yeah. and she was the only person that was really you know the only authority figure he had mm -hmm. so i mean i just i guess it's just it depends on the, the child it depends on on what their morals are you know or what's been put in them you know but yeah they can be pretty disrespectful mm -hmm. i mean i had a situation where uh it was a parent she came for the the conference and the child she was <laughs> she was like trying to keep her 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 daughter calm and whatever and so the girl looks at her mom and say dude don't touch me you don't do that to your mother that's your mother mm -hmm. 
you talk to her with more respect than that. Yeah. So you have to kind of check them. You know what I mean? Um, if they get too out of line, even with their mouths, they can be really uh, use foul language. You know what I mean? Profanity. It's like it's like a, a everyday language to them. You know what I'm saying? You say, watch your mouth. Right. But I mean, they they hear you. OK, I'm sorry, ma'am. Next thing you're doing it again. Five minutes later or even less than that. So. So, yeah, Vestina, can you tell me your job occupation at the school? Yes, my job occupation is a sixth grade special ed para. And the para means paraprofessional. Um, I am a support to the teacher. And I help them to be able to teach and inst instruct. Kind of like keep the kids orderly so that they can give their instructions because if they don't understand what they're doing then they're going to have to keep repeating it over and over again mm -hmm. so i am there to to support to support the teacher mm -hmm. so can you give me um your definition uh of a special ed kid as far as learning and also you know me the physical part yeah there are different um learning curves for special ed students. Uh, we have special ed students that are disabled. That means that you probably will have to feed them. Um, they may be wheelchair bound. Um, they may have some type of deformity where they have like a uh, brace on their legs or um, their speech may be impaired or something. Uh, could be deaf. You could could be blind. I mean, it could be a lot of those. Those would be considered disabled or dis children or students that are disabled. And then you have those that have cognitive, where their 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 mental state is is somewhere broken down. You know, from trauma. You know, some of the kids may have tr had trauma, abuse in their homes, and you know it caused their learning to be um, delayed. Um, there is a, a term for that. But um, yeah, and then you have behavior students, students that have behavior problems that were special ed mm -hmm. students. And they, and see, that's, that's that part right there is what I'm in the classroom to help to support those type of students because they are very disruptive mm -hmm. and they, one child may do something to the other child and, and this, the teacher is trying to inst give her instructions, but then they would disrupt, <laughs> you know, by hitting the other student or calling my name and then the next thing they call the other person a name, you know, back and forth, that type of stuff. That's where I'm there for to help to diffuse, to help to stop or interrupt that so that the teacher can continue to to instruct, you know, give her instructions or her his instructions. All right. Now, do you see a lot of bully going on for, you know, I me, mean, special ed kids? Yeah, there's a lot of bullying going on. Um, we, that is just like a normal thing. If a person doesn't feel good about themselves, then they're more likely going to be picking on you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so they, they bully with the weight, how you look, you know, all of that, how you dress. It's, it can come, it can, bullying can come in different forms. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there is, there is a lot of bullying going on in every school. Not right. mine, just in particular. And um, the way they do it, you know, it could be torture and bring a lot of intimidation and fear on the student. Because sometimes the administration and sometimes the people at the top that are the disciplinarians don't see everything. You know, you come, they come in groups. You know what I mean? It could be just one and uh, that comes and then it could be a group of people that come and just, you know, just torture you, just uh, hit on you or pull your hair or, you know, just a lot of different things can happen with that bullying. 
So why you, why you think it's so much bullying going on nowadays? With the culture and how the culture culture have changed, you know, we have more uh, the LGBTQ community, and they are very vulnerable and sensitive to that subject. Um, a lot of students, not just students, but staff, can't really grip the thought of you know um, that gender. Um, the, this whole gender thing, you know what I mean? And now they have this law that they're trying to put in place about the child being able to make their own identity or gender decisions. The parents can't say what they what the child is. Mm -hmm. They have to go with what the quote unquote law and laws that they put in place for these um, gender um, the, the, I'll just say the LGBTQ uh, agenda. So would you, would you think that, um, is more kids in the middle school or the high school kids that's doing all the buddy? I think it can go from elementary all the way up. It just depends on the child. It depends on the circumstance. It depends on the uh i guess you could say this the low self-esteem mm -hmm. uh rejection all of those things uh that are involved with uh the student itself and they just start attacking the other student mm -hmm. i mean for no apparent reason but i think it should be something in place in every school that actually address this issue. I mean, they need to come up with some type of um, uh, guideline uh, and some consequences for those students that just wish to bully, you know, other students. Mm -hmm. I mean, they some students come to school, you know, mm -hmm. just to do that, <laughs> to pick on another student. So yeah, I really do believe they need to make the, the uh, guidelines a little stiffer uh, a little, there should be more consequences for those students that wish to bully other students. Mm -hmm. But most of the time they ignore it from the top down. And then, you know, then the child, if they take their life, God forbid, you know, is nothing, it had, it's nothing that was done mm -hmm. to prevent it. You see what I mean? They didn't give the ch other child, the, uh, the, they did not give the other child a a consequence for doing what they did. And then the child took his life. So do you think that uh, a lot of the students uh, have issues going to, you know, the teachers or the principals, you know, to, to let them know that they being bullied to the point where like they're not uncomfortable no. with telling them? No, that? I mean, there we have, you you have people that have reported it, but they fail to act on it. And then that's how it ends up something serious comes out of it with the child taking his life or whatever, because they they never really addressed it. They never really pulled the person to the side. It could be where there's intimidation going on in certain grade levels. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And they may be afraid of the parents, you know, addressing them. And so they just rather just be out of it. Mm -hmm. So what's the hardest thing about working with the kids in the school? Well, the hardest thing is, you know, it, it wouldn't be hard if they weren't so disrespectful. But students are, they tend to be very disrespectful now where, you know, um, I, would say that, I mean, if they weren't so disrespectful, then, you know, we would probably have some better schools. But um, because of them being disrespectful like that, we're not, it's hard for us to, as, educa as educators to teach because they, they are doing things like calling each other names and they may call you one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you're trying to give them instructions, but they really are not paying you any attention. And they're like, um, 
just doing disruptive stuff in the classroom to get your attention off of what you're saying and doing. I mean, I've seen it. It's, mm -hmm. it's really, it's really hard to teach yeah. if you can't get the, the child's attention. So that's, that's about the size of it. Do you see more females or male, more males working into the school? Mm, I would say it's more f females, more mm. females than males. Now, do you think that they would need more male figures in the school? I think it would be a good thing for um, more males because ch uh, students tend to look up to that the the male and their voice their voice is what carries and i really believe when you have more males in place those kids will uh, respect them more mm. and then it all depends on too if you had like mother and daddy issues okay some kids had mother issues because there was no daddy in the in the in the home you see what i'm saying yeah. and so they tend to like be disrespectful to the male. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, or the mother, because they might have been mad because the daddy wasn't there. And so they give the mother a hard time or vice versa. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that's what they, that it's what they see. If they see a female, um, a female um, uh, teacher, then they may really give her a hard time, disrespect. You know, nothing she says mean anything. And it's almost like he's, they're running over her mm -hmm. and vice versa. But I don't see much of that with male teachers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It seems like they, their voice carries and they kind of like pay attention to them mm -hmm. more. Yeah. So what's the best thing you like working with the mm -hmm. kids? Well... I like I like to see their like the skills, you know, the skill sets that you they need to master, like reading and math and being able to because they all connect. They all build on one another like reading. You know, if you don't if you can't spell, you know, more likely you're not going to have a big vocabulary. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to comprehend. And these are all dynamics that need to happen when you're reading. And with math, if you miss one step, you might as well say you're going to get the, the whole problem wrong because they build. It builds on one. It's one step after the other. And you have to have all you have to know all of the steps in order to get the problem right. So, yeah, those are the two areas. I mean, um, I, you know, at the middle school that I work at. I work in the English department. So all the sixth grade uh, teachers that I work with are English, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you uh, motivate the kids, you know I me, mean, to achieve okay. you know, their goals, what they're trying to achieve? Well, at my school, um, I'm considered a candy lady. Okay. And most of the time I bring like this big bag of candy and and if they're doing well, I said, if you behave well and you're doing and you're really doing your work for the whole entire class, then I give you a treat at the end and I'll let them come get two or three pieces of candy. And they're like, just like on top of the world. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's my that's my thing. I feel like you need to um, really um, the way kids are now and they don't have any motivation, you know, even for being at school. You need to really kind of like hone in and give them something, you know, that to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do what I do. So what are the, uh, the goals, you know, that you want to achieve, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. being in the position that you're in? Yeah. My goals that I want to achieve is I want to see as many students as I possibly can to make it. And I'm talking be, uh, be uh, successful citizens in the community. And since you've been working in school mm -hmm. districts, you know, um, 
Have you seen any of your kids that you know I mean that you've been working with in the past? Have you seen them achieve some things yeah. in life? Yes. Um, the ones that I've seen, they are still respectful and they still call me Mrs. White when they see me. They, uh, you know, we have like uh, friendly conversations about what they're doing, where they're working, how's their family, because a lot of them are married. They got their own kids now and they're, you know, um, are very successful. Mm -hmm. So tell me the difference between like the Benton Harbor School District versus the school district that you're in right now. The Ben Harbor School District and South Bend School District is very similar. Um, I, I do see a lot of political stuff that bothered me then because I worked in the high school uh, office mm -hmm. where the principal and everything and there was just a lot of political stuff like with the students and mm -hmm. how they make differences and you know what I mean and put one on a pedestal and then you know kick the other one to the curb you know that type of thing it was mm -hmm. a lot of that going on and I see the same type of stuff in this in this school system where it's not about the students it's mm -hmm. about the money it's about the power and the clout you know the recognition you know that type of thing and so I think the focus needs to flip and it needs to be more on the students and them uh, getting to the place where they can be successful mm -hmm. and working on their behaviors. Because, I mean, you know, it said it take a community to, a community to raise a child. Mm -hmm. And I think it needs to go back to that because we need to have mothers and fathers. They may not be their actual mother. They may not be their actual father, but be able to to give them some um, to give them some uh, morals or uh, show them like how to be a good person, mm -hmm. you know, um, change their behavior. To, and yeah, it, it, it needs to go back to that because mm -hmm. I think, you know, we had more students that end up being very successful when you um when you had that community thing going on <laughs> so i know that you know um your father and your mother worked at uh in the school district and i know your father was a principal and your mother was a teacher mm -hmm. now would you say that you know uh that that came down <laughs> into and to you, you know, that's why you're working in the school district right now? Well, um, I don't know. For some reason or another, I just gravitated to education. You know, with me, you know, going back to school and actually being very motivated and um, interested in gaining more knowledge and everything, it just seemed like I, it flipped where I was starting to be more concerned about the generation and what they're becoming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I know that they're going to need that extra parenting to get where they're because some some of them don't have parents. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I had parent, a parent or uh, two parents in place, but some of these kids don't have but one parent, a, a grandparent, a an aunt, an uncle, you know, maybe a mother mm -hmm. or maybe a dad, but they need it's almost like um, they need extra parenting, and if they can see it in the in the school that they're attending, you know they can still have hope mm -hmm. that they can you know get where they need to go. Do you think um, back then uh, school was more important then than now? Yes. I do feel like back then, you know, I'm not going to say everybody was like they had their own agendas and they had their own reasons for being in the educational field. But I felt like they had a, a true passion, a, a fire for seeing the kids succeed. Mm -hmm. And they, it was more mentoring going on, you know, where they would take a group of students aside and 
kind of help them with the areas or the skills that they they needed help in you know you don't see a lot of that going on now so yeah I do feel like you know it was a little more passion for for the students back then than now yes so how would you describe the relationship that you have with the kids in the school that you're in right now you know what the the, the kids or the students that I see on a day-to-day -day basis it just makes me smile because i have students that come up to me at first thing in the morning because i'm i'm there the first person they see they come in the hallway they go to their lockers it's like i'll say hello good morning i said how are you all doing today or something to that fact or hello and they start calling out by name mm -hmm. they come up to me and hug me i mean i do this happens all through the day you know, Miss Y, Miss Y, Miss Y. So, yeah, it, it makes you, you know, want to get up and get dressed and and be ready to go, you know, mm -hmm. again, because you go, you know, you're touching somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And you know that through that you, you're going to change their to the, the trajectory of where they're going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's going to change their life if you are really making a difference mm -hmm. in that in those students life. Now, would you say the students make it hard to come work in the school or the teachers or the sometimes it can be a little bit of both because i mean like i said if the t if the student is 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 like carrying out and doing all this stuff being disrespectful and being disruptive in the classroom and all that that could make you not want to work with them you know what i'm saying but then you have to have that patience that you didn't put in you, but God put in you to be able to do what you need to do. And that means to do your assignment. Me, myself, I think this is an assignment from God. Mm -hmm. It's divine. And me to just to show up and do what I know to do. OK, um, there's there's teachers. I mean, there's teachers, there's support staffs, there's different people there that, you know, uh, may not like what they see that you bring into the table so they could be a disruption mm -hmm. and you be you know you have to it'd be something that you have to like pray about because you know you don't like the vibe that you you're getting from that person but yeah it's yeah it's it's your determination i'm a determined person that's one of my attributes that i bring to the table i'm determined i'm like a you could say a bulldog yeah. I ain't mm -hmm. budging. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like when I'm after something, I'm getting it. Yeah. That's just the type of person I am. I didn't really realize how a uh, go-getter I am. But yeah. yeah, that's part of my DNA. So list, list, list five objective, objective to describe yourself. Okay. Um, five, I'm a determined person. I'm a loyal person. I mean, if I find a friend, if you be a friend to me, I, I can be your best friend. I feel like I can be anybody's best friend. Um, I'm kind. Um, that's another one. And I'm uh, long suffering. Another word for that is patience. Because, I mean, I don't, I don't give up. I mean, just because I see you acting that way today don't mean that I have to continue to say that you're going to be that way. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like that's temporal and that can change at any moment. You know, just having the right person in your, in your life. Mm -hmm. um, another person, another... Um, yeah, another attribute for me would be friendly yeah I'm a friendly person mm -hmm. yeah so those are those are I mean and then another I feel like I'm a leader so most of the time when I start something or start a tree and I look around me and somebody else is doing it so that's how you know that's that's a key thing mm -hmm. you know that if you're a leader you got a lot of followers and some won't tell you that they following you, but then they'll be secretly following you. So do you think that the five things that you uh, uh, listed, do you think that 
people don't value those things anymore. You know, um, when it comes down to want to build friendships, you know, and then also the leadership part and things like that. Do you think? And then the friendly. Do you think a lot of people take take advantage of those people nowadays? Yes. I do feel like, you know, you can have all the right things going for you, but if it's not in the person, then they're not going to, they're not going to respect that. Mm -hmm. exactly. they don't, that's why children are not respecting those that are in authority and the authority don't respect the child and then they belittle them. If they don't meet their standards, they don't meet their qualifications, then they, they, okay, if you, anybody can be the best, you know, academically, you know what I mean? Everything going just, just the way they want it to go. But then you have, what about this child down here that's going to need some help? They're going to need some working with, you know, that's more rewarding. When you can, you, you can uh, give a child that needs some help and you see them progress. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's that to me, that is, I feel like that's where the need for a teacher comes. And the teacher just not there to teach, but be everything that that child needs. Be the mother, be the father, be everything that you can be, you know, because that child probably didn't get it at home. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then teach that way you can be you can you can be uh, or feel like you've accomplished something. Mm -hmm. So, how do you handle uh, a irresponsible parent that you know come to the school and you know be disrespectful mm -hmm. to the student mm -hmm. and you know what I mean the the teachers as well? How do you handle that situation? Okay, I've learned from you know every every. Um, occupation I've had it geared towards customer service mm -hmm. so I've learned over a period of time that is no sense of trying to get uh, you know get wit back with the person but diffuse it and feel empowered to give them information that's going to make them more knowledgeable but to shut that all of that confusion down and um, I feel like when you have an irresponsible uh, parent, you need to be knowledgeable about what you're trying to communicate to that person and hear them out first. You need to hear them out first. Then you give your because, you know, they all frustrated. They all upset and all over the place. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's not a good thing to, to, to get back at them. You let them talk. And then you give them, you know, the information they need about their child mm -hmm. and what you're going to do to try to make that situation better. Mm -hmm. Because they first thing they want to do is come at you like what you watch, what, what you doing or what you not doing. You see what I'm saying? But they mm -hmm. don't even have the whole story. They just have basically what their child have told them about you. Mm -hmm. So you have to just got to lay it out there. So describe the worst day you had with the parent or student. Well, actually, I'll say with the student because I have had the opportunity to cover classes for teachers. So that means I, that puts me in a place of being a teacher. And when you when your class is so out of control, you can't give instruction. That is your worst day. You know, when you can't, it seems like you can't move forward with them doing the actual assignment because they have not heard not one time what you've said or they just uh, refuse to, to listen. You know what I'm saying? And they because they have kept conversation going on over here, conversation going over there. You know what I mean? And you're trying to get them to be quiet so that you could um, without getting internalizing it because you can get angry real quick you know when somebody's not paying you any attention but you want you don't want it you just want the attention so your voice may go up you see what I'm saying mm -hmm. so that they can you can feel like they're hearing you but really you're not supposed to take it internalize it because that's when you you know you um you they they will take it wrong and then they'll start coming back at you 
So, what you think the um, what you think the uh, uh, the strategy on getting all the kids, you know, the proper education that they need to succeed? Like, what, what you think? You know? Well, you know what? I really believe that they need more help. Mm -hmm. um, with the funds and everything that they're allotted, each school and school district, mm -hmm. they only allotted enough to have a teacher and maybe a pair. But I think you need to have maybe a couple, two or three pairs in a room at a time. Mm -hmm. It depends on the ratio with the students in the class. But sometimes you could only you could have like ten, and you should you might need three pairs in there because of the distractions, the, the stuff that's going on, you wouldn't think it would come from 10 kids, mm -hmm. but they can just be rowdy. So yeah, I think they need more support in schools today. Mm -hmm. And I know it takes money in order to be able to do it because you're gonna have to pay them. Mm -hmm. But I think they need more pairs in, in the classrooms, visible, to help out and help to support the, the, the teachers. <laughs> and and get the get what the um, give the students what they need in order to be better. So, within the next five years, do you think you will see yourself as a principal or a superintendent one day? <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll just see what God has for me. I can't really say where I will be, but who knows? I could be in politics. Yeah. Never know. Never know where God's going to take me. I'm just will, a willing vessel ready to do what I need to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so what can people, you know, um, find you at on social media, you know, if they want to, you know, interview you or, you know, have some type of, you know, con contact, you know. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm out on Facebook, uh, Vastini, Vastinia White. Or um, I have a business that's been in it's it's been in preparation for a minute, but eventually it's gonna roll out too. It's called Be You Beautiful Soul. I am a personal stylist or wardrobe stylist, and yeah, they can find me out there on Facebook okay. and Instagram. Actually, I'm on Instagram too. I just don't use that platform much but yeah facebook they can they can reach me all right yeah. thank you vestina you know for being on rise tv until next time you be blessed you you too right. thank you